Question six is a question about uh, acids, bases and buffers. Uh, and we've been told here that we've got a weak Bronsted Lowry acid here, which is ethanoic acid. It says an equilibrium set up when ethanoic acid is added to water. So ethanoic acid is going to react with water and there would be an equilibrium set up. So ethanoic acid is going to act as an acid and it's going to have a proton removed from it. This proton, which is acidic, which is bonded to oxygen, is going to be removed from it by water, which is going to act as a base. So base 1 and acid 1. And that is going to produce the conjugate base of ethanoic acid. So this is going to be sorry, base 1. This one would actually be base 2, because we want to label the pairs so these ones are a pair. And then that's going to produce H3O plus the hydroxonium ion, which is essentially going to be the conjugate acid of water, which was that base. So we can link these together by lines, just to highlight that that is the case. Second bit of the question says you that the ethanoic acid's got this pH, and it contains both hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. Now the hydroxide ions is a little bit of a strange one because we're used to acids being sources of H+, plus, surely not OH-. minus. But how can an aqueous solution contain hydroxide ions? It does so because water also dissociates. So a good tip here, it says aqueous solution of an acid. So we've got an acid, we know that only produces H+, plus, but aqueous solution. So always remember the water because water partially dissociates to form OH minus. It's a good idea to put the equation in here just to show that you know what you're doing, but do make sure that you show that as a reversible reaction arrow because this is not something that occurs to a great extent. And we calculate the concentration of hydroxide ions in this solution of ethanoic acid. We're essentially considering that water is acting as a weak acid in this case. And so we can write a dissociation constant for the acid, uh, which is known as the ionic product of water, which is essentially, if we look back at this equation, going to be the concentration of OH minus divided by the concentration of H plus. Now, it should, this should be divided by the concentration of H2O, but because water is present in such a vast concentration, we actually tend to ignore its effect. And so we can just write the ionic product in this case. And this, at 25 degrees at least, which is what we're assuming if we're not told anything otherwise, is 10 to the power of minus 14 uh, mole squared decimeters to the minus 6. And this relationship here enables us, if we know the concentration of H+, plus, which we can get from the pH, to work out the concentration of OH-. minus. So we can rearrange this to give OH- minus is just going to be 10 to the minus 14 divided by H+. Plus. And we work out the H plus concentration as 10 to the minus the pH, because our definition of pH is minus log 10 of H plus. So when we work that through, we find that the H plus concentration here is 10 to the power minus 3.06. And when we write that out, we get 8.71 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per decimeter cubed. And so if we plug that into this <coughs> equation here, or formula here, we're going to find the concentration of hydroxide ions to be 1.15 times 10 to the minus 11 moles per decimeter cubed. second part of this question is all about adding an excess of aqueous ethanoic acid to solid calcium carbonate, and that is acting as a buffer solution. So first off, it's asked us for an equation for the reaction. So we've got CH3COOH reacting with calcium carbonate, and acids react with carbonates to produce CO2 and water. And then in addition, there's going to be the calcium ethanoate salt here. So CH3COO. So the H is being replaced by the calcium. And we have to remind ourselves that the calcium's charge would be 2+, plus, whereas the ethanoate is a single negative charge. So 
so we need the ethanoate to appear twice in this. So CH3COO minus twice Ca2 plus. Now you can leave the charges in if you want, but you don't have to put the charges in. Explain why the buffer solution has formed. Now remember, a buffer must contain a weak acid. Contains a weak acid. CH3COOH or ethanoic acid um, and the reason we know that is because we've added an excess of this added excess so we know that all the calcium carbonates reacted but there's an excess of this around and so we know that it contains a weak acid and a large amount, amount or a similar amount of its conjugate base CH3COO minus the ethanoate ion well it's probably better to put here a comparable amount because it has to be within a factor of 10 in order to really have a reasonable buffer a comparable amount of its conjugate base so because we've added the excess of ethanoic acid provided we haven't added a complete we're, we're going to have a large amount of ethanoate produced and remember this is a soluble salt here, all ethanoate salts are soluble, so if we put the state symbol in there, we know that this is a soluble ethanoate that's present. Now we need to explain how this buffer controls pH. Now sometimes in these questions they ask you to define a buffer as well, but here we haven't been asked to do that, so we don't need to spend time writing about it. We just need to use that knowledge to answer the question. Now key thing here, in your answer you should explain how the equilibrium system allows the buffer solution to control the pH. So you've been told that's what the buffer is doing. So you need to consider which equilibrium they're actually talking about here. And the equilibrium is between ethanoic acid... and H plus ions and its conjugate base, ethanoate. That's the key equilibrium. And we've got a large reservoir of undissociated acid because it's in excess. We've got a large reservoir due to excess and it's a weak acid. And we've got a large reservoir of this from calcium ethanoic. And just because this is a quality of written communication question doesn't mean that you need to write a very protracted essay here. It's perfectly fine just to lay out, in this case, what happens when different substances are added. So if H plus is added, then essentially CH3COO minus reacts with H+, plus, forming CH3COOH. So in other words, the equilibrium shifts to the left, minimizing increase in the concentration of H+. Plus. So as H plus is added, the equilibrium shifts to the left, removing H plus, and hence keeping the pH approximately constant. Let's think about what happens when OH minus is added. There's two things that can happen. Either OH minus reacts with H plus from the acid to form water. Then as the concentration of H plus goes down, so equilibrium shifts to the right minimizing the decrease in the concentration of H+. So this gets removed by reaction with the alkali, the equilibrium system responds by shifting to the right to replenish these supplies. <laughs> Or you could have that the CH3COOH reacts with H plus directly 
uh, reacts, sorry, reacts with the OH minus directly forming CH3 COO minus and water in this case and that would do a similar type of thing. We Again we've depleted our concentration of yeah so again we've got a large reservoir of this and so that shouldn't be a problem so essentially the overall result of this um, is that we've mopped up our alkali. So this is probably the most conventional explanation but this one could work though it's more difficult to think how we could have show that this type of effect on the equilibrium. So the, probably the best way to handle any OH- is that it does react with the H+, plus, forming water, and hence the equilibrium shifts in that direction. And the key thing here is that we have OH- minus does not affect pH.